Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another show um, here on Loving the Game. And um, tonight, I've got none other than Kwaka Boucher, all the way from, from the Cape, and um, who's going to join us for the next um, hour or so. And um, yeah, just to start things off, um, this man's got a CV from here to who knows where. Um, he's just recently um, been appointed as the... Um, the, the chairman of the Boerenvereniging. I'm not sure what that would be, the Farmers Association, I would assume. Um, uh -huh. Although that could be a different organization on its own. But anyway, um, and also he's on the direction of an organization called SAI, who I'm sure he'll tell us a bit more about that later on, because I mean, I'm not going to try and tell you something that I'm not 100% sure of. But anyway, welcome, Kwaka. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks, Jock. Thanks for the invite. Um, Kwaka, yes, I've, I've known you for a while now, and um, I thankfully met you as well in person, which was a great experience. Um, it was, in fact, I remember it very, very well. Um, it was the last, it was the final round of Super Rugby last year um, at Loftus of all places, and the Lions came to play the Bulls and they got thrashed properly. I probably saw about five minutes of the game as a staunch Bulls supporter that it's unheard of. Um, but it was one of the best evenings I've ever had in my life at a rugby game um, in so many ways besides the Bulls winning. So, yeah, I mean, just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are and um, where, where you come from. Well, Jock, I'm a young Boere boyki from the Free State. I was born there in a town called Kruenstad and uh, went to school there and everything. But uh, for a short while, and only a very short while, it was about four or five years, uh, my grandfather and my father used to farm together. And uh, they used to have a game farm in the very far north of Noord Transvaal, uh, very close to a town called Messina. So I started school there. So I grew up in a little bit of blue bull uh, uh, battle, if you can call it that. And uh, for a very, very short period of my life, I was a blue bull supporter. Uh, I can't deny it because there's a couple of photos my dad loved to show everybody. But I'm a hardcore free state boyki. Uh, finished school there. And uh, yeah, after school, um, started uh, with my dad in the farming and studied part-time, uh, played a lot of club rugby, also played uh, a little bit of provincial rugby. And uh, at the end of the day, um, yeah, uh, I ended up in the wine industry uh, because of rugby. I, I, I will, I will uh, come to that later. Uh, I decided uh, I want to... I want to pursue a career in the wine industry. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. And uh, I think I think uh, here and there, where I'm, um, um, what do you call it, uh, where I'm associated with a couple of other organisations and things is uh, yeah, I can't sit still. I'm a little bit a uh, not ADD, but a, a what uh, yeah, let's say ADD because uh, before I say ABCD. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I can't sit still, love keeping busy, love working with people. And, uh, yeah, and uh, that's how I met you. We uh, we ended up sitting in a box at Loftus together watching watching the game. And, uh, yeah, had some good fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, yes, indeed. And I must say, um, I lost you somewhere during the evening, but... Um, from social, thanks to social <laughs> media and stuff, um, I knew exactly where you were, and um, you were in some um, very esteemed company um, that evening, um, which I'm sure we'll touch on a little bit later on. But um, tell me, Kwaka, you just you just mentioned that I mean you've had a love for rugby since you were small, and um, and that that actually carried on um, throughout your life, and I mean it's still I mean evident to your shirt you're wearing tonight. Um, um, I mean, I'd wear that shirt every day of the week if I could. So just tell us about your your love for rugby and how that developed into, uh, well, there was a short time that you actually had a bit of a career in, in rugby as well. Yeah. Well, um, I, I grew up in a, uh, let's say, when, when I started school, uh, when I went to grade one in 1990, uh, I went to a little school 
in the northern Transvaal called Mupani, Larsko. And uh, it was very close to the Zimbabwean border. There was a lot of uh, Zimbabwean kids in the school as well. And uh, uh, it was a very small school. I think from grade one to uh, the new word, grade seven, at uh, that time it was standard five. We were uh, less than 50 kids in the school. And uh, we were just four kids in grade one. And uh, yeah, it was uh, everything at that school was rugby. There was only one team. It was just the team. There wasn't a second team or anything. It was just the team. And uh, yeah, so I started playing with the bigger boys uh, from a very young age. And uh, uh, I, I fell in love with the game watching a guy with the name of Uli Schmidt. He was, he was so ahead of his time, the type of hooker he, he, he was. He was uh, just such a phenomenal player and uh, such an aggressive player. So I fell in love with, the, uh, with, with rugby, um, uh, uh, looking, uh, looking back or thinking back. Um, his name always comes to mind. And I don't know if uh, some of you guys will remember in the old days, uh, the, 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 the rugby jerseys you bought, as a supported jersey was a I R no transfer or I R transfer. It was uh, you didn't have the one with the badges or so. Uh, and I had a jersey uh, I R uh, no transfer. And every time I see that jersey, I'm just uh, I think about uh, you know I think about Uli Schmidt and and the things he did. And uh, I think Leon Schuster had a song. Uh, about Uli Schmidt, Uli Bully, and uh, my dad yeah. he had this old vinyl, um, uh, 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 yeah, this old vinyl records at home, and uh, it was either uh, Blaise Bridgers, Guy Corsten, or Leon Schuster, and uh, so I grew up listening to the Leon Schuster rugby, the rugby songs, and uh, so yeah, that's my first memory of rugby, and it's just. Uh, watching my dad and his friends and everybody come together and watch the game together and how they put scores down and each one at that time put a five rank note with your score it, it was such a, a commodity uh, that it, it I, I fell in love with everything around the game more than the game itself and uh yeah so that was my first first memory of rain yes um in fact, when you mentioned Leon Schuster now, I mean, I'm actually trying to get hold of him to get him on the show. So, I mean, if there's anybody out there that can help me, please, yeah, guys. Yeah, he's, um, he's still on mix it, so I think he's going to be difficult. Well, um, yeah, any, anyway, maybe someone uh, has, a, has a smoke signal or, or still a mix it account that works, who knows. Anyway, <laughs> tell me... Um, I mean, you, you, um, you. I mean, your love for Uli, obviously, that's where you. I mean, that you became a, a hooker yourself, and um, you played for a few teams. Um, I don't know if if you were part of the professional era or not, but um, I mean, you played quite a few games for a few unions. Briefly, I mean, I, I know Boland. I think Boland was one of them, and um, I think the Griffins was one of the other teams. I mean, what was your experience in those days? I mean, anybody that you played with that, that the world knows of today? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, well, to give you, to give you a, a better background of my rugby career, it's, uh, I, was, I was mainly a club player. I, was, uh, I loved my club rugby. It was, uh, it was the, best, the best of commodity that you can get. And... Uh, Mills. <laughs> so yeah, the club rugby was pretty awesome. Um, I, I started after school. We uh, played at Paris Rugby Club in the Northern Free State, playing in the Griffins League. I played Griffins under 18, 19, under 21s, and uh, further on to to the seniors. But first, uh, for uh, the Platteland team, uh, before I played for the seniors uh, on invitation. Uh, but the club rugby uh, while farming uh, that was that was just awesome. Uh, it was uh, the whole town uh, got together. It was uh, it's uh, the hooters going the the people in the Hilux Park is pressing the hooters uh, every time someone scores a try and so on. So uh, so yeah, it was the club rugby um, that that uh, we uh, because I was a farmer from from after school studying, uh, being a farmer played played with. Uh, some of the clubs and uh, 
I got invited by, uh, at that time, the, the coach at the Griffins was uh, uh, Uncle, uh, I think we called him Fine Pinar. He was a very short coach, awesome coach. And uh, Guar, he just finished playing at that stage. Um, Eric Herbert, he was the backline coach, and his brother Mike was the manager. That was just before Urson became the coach there. Um, so I played, a, I played a couple of games there in the Vodacom Cup, and uh, yeah, had an awesome uh, uh, time there. And uh, I went through a bad period in my life uh, in tween, uh, 2009, 2010, with the whole uh, uh, economy collapsing. And I had, uh, I had a lot of investments in property and stuff like that. And uh, so at that time, I was, I was a bit down. Uh, I had a knee operation. And then a guy reached out to me with the name of Lofi Elo. Uh, he, he reached out to me and he said, listen, he's building up this team in, uh, in the Boerland. If, uh, if I want to come down for, uh, let's say, a preseason tryout period. And uh, oh, uh, he was going to say no to that. So I went there. Um, I had a, a fantastic preseason. Uh, got fit as hell and uh, uh, made a lot of good friends. And uh, it was guys in the team at that time. It was like uh, Colonel Hendricks, uh, Oti Lowe, Bola Kondrari, um, uh, oh, Vali Leroux, how can you forget that? Zandre Ordan, oh, wow. and Junior Best. It was, it was a massive team. And uh, Lofi had a talk with me and he said, listen, uh, Kwaha, uh, you're probably not one of the best players, but you've got a good attitude and a good vibe for the team and stuff like that. So he he, he said, "Listen, uh, he uh, he want uh, he'll hold on to me as a, a third uh, as the third choice uh, hooker." And ah, uh, oh, I just uh, I loved it. I didn't play a lot of rugby. Play, I only played a couple of games, uh, including uh, some preseason games against uh, some big teams and uh, after the season as well. And uh, yeah, I went back to the Griffins for one season. After, yeah, I think one season. And then in 2012, I said, listen, I had enough. This was good. Uh, I need to grow up now. I need to get back into the <laughs> game. I got a good reset on life. I got a new, uh, uh, a new uh, fuel, if you can say, uh, after, after that whole experience. And uh, for that short uh, period that I was in Wellington, I just fell in love with the Cape. I fell in love with the wine industry. Uh, also, one of the reasons maybe I didn't play that much because of all the wine, and uh, it was just uh, it was just phenomenal. So I started in the wine industry, and uh, oh well, never looked back. Uh, building a nice building a nice career up in in, in, in in the Cape. My family's still in the Free State. And uh, I'm still deep in my heart a Cheetah supporter. So, uh, yeah, it's like uh, the Cheetahs currently is like a brother in jail, you know. You love him, <laughs> but you don't like to talk about him. It's, uh, it's one of those things. I was just going to ask you now, um, your, favorite, your favorite team, um, I mean, I think you've said it more than once now. I mean, the Cheetahs stands out. So, clearly, that's your number one team of choice if I... Uh, if I'm correct, or am I a bit wrong in that regard? Yeah, uh, let's. Okay, I'm I'm a massive um, rugby supporter in general, so um, I'm, I love I love watching the game. I love uh, uh, looking at both teams. Love to see a nice uh, matchup. You know, uh, I had the let's say uh, I don't want to say the privilege, uh, uh, but I had the. I had that experience of playing in an open league where all 14 unions were playing against each other, you know, 70, 80 points against uh, smaller unions from the bigger ones. Uh, that is just something in South Africa that will never work. It's just, uh, I think the best format we ever had was the six top teams against the eight bottom teams uh, rather than the 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. It's all, what, what, what's it, the... Uh, Eight six now, eight in the top and six in the bottom. I'm I'm not even sure right now. Uh, that's how long rugby has been off TV now. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's uh, it's just the Cheetahs is just one of those teams that I love so much. And uh, I think 2005, uh, 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, when we won on Loftus, I had the yeah, privilege of being, and the one we lost, the, 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 the first one that we uh, lost against the Bulls, everybody was so nice to us in our Cheetahs jerseys. Afterwards, everybody was so, all the Bulls supporters, they were so nice to us. We had fries together uh, <laughs> while walking back to the office parking area. Every, everyone was so nice. And uh, it was like, oh, Cheetahs, don't worry. Uh, next year, you guys, you're doing so well. You're doing the the year after that when we won with that trial from Bayer Horseman. Yeah. It, uh, walking back, it was it was a uh, sorry for my language. It was a, a shit show. Everybody, uh, everybody ignored us. Uh, there was blue blue flags on the ground everywhere. It was just at, at, uh, oh well. For the first time in let's say about 36 years, we were cocky. So uh, 37 years, we were cocky and we were all over the place. There was a Hilux Bucky with the big white Brahman bull on the back. We <laughs> climbed on the thing. and uh, So yeah, we had such a good time. And uh, that was so memorable for us. And we won it three years in a row. Uh, I think we drew, we drew the, the yeah. fourth. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, it was pretty cool. And I think that Cheetah team is... Without a doubt, one of my favorite teams, uh, looking back, because Rassi Erasmus, when he first, uh, he coached the year before and started playing and went and playing in the final and lost. Um, yeah. and then he went on just coaching. But very similar to last year's Springbok team, he had something in the mix there that was the same. He had the big forward pack on the bench. And it was just uh, myself being a forward. I loved the investment he took in that team, having uh, two props on the on the on the bench. And uh, yeah. oh yeah, that was before the twenty three players. Or uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, 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 he didn't have. Uh, yeah, but he had the he had the two props, and he just scrummed the living crap out of everybody with guys like uh, Ostirant, Oli Larue, CJ van der Linde, and those guys. Uh, and uh, um, Yanni uh, Duplessis as well before he went to the shot. So uh, that was just phenomenal. And uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, I think that was my favorite team. I don't know if that's your sister there, but um, yeah. Jenny, she remembers yeah. that day very well as well. <laughs> she, was my, she was my driver the night we went out. Uh, we went to the Puma box. She was our driver, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> oh well, nice having them on. Um, obviously, over all the years that you've now watched rugby, I mean, you're clearly a staunch rugby supporter before anything else. You, um, I think you mentioned it. Uli Uli Schmidt was your was your guy. I mean, any 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 guy that stands out for you now at this in this day and age. Um, a lot of guys will say that I'm biased. Uh, but uh, I think, and it's no, yeah. Uh, I think a guy like Dwayne Vermeulen is just the whole package, you know. Uh, I, I always, I always admired players uh, of his caliber. Like uh, before him, it was a guy like uh, Danny Rousseau. Before that, it was mm. Korne Krieger. Uh, before that, way before that, um, it was uh, it was uh, guys like. Um, do you remember Adrian Richter? Oh, yes. Kier, I mean, those guys, Andre Fenter, uh, Juan Smith, you know, yeah. the big physical, um, the physical yeah. player. And uh, it was just amazing on how those big guys can move on the field. And uh, so, yeah, today I think um, I'll say a guy like, uh, a guy like him. And uh, I, yeah, who can I, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, if I, uh, yeah, I, I've got this tunnel vision of, 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 of the perfect player. And for me, it's, it's those, uh, those kind of guys. Having the whole package, you know, can come into a line, uh, run with the ball in hand, do offloads, massive defending, doing the technical things. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, those guys. So clearly, you've watched a lot of rugby in your life, and as in, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm meaning, uh, I'm not meaning as in on television. I mean live. So you've you've been around town, um, you've actually been around the world as well. And I know was it last year you took a trip to New Zealand? Um, 
Uh, I'd just like to know, I mean, of all the grounds you visited, and I mean, there's, there's probably quite a few, which ground to you yeah. stands out the most and why? Yo, listen, um, I think one one of the grounds that still st st uh, will be standing out in my mind, never been there, I think um, if the RAND uh, don't keep on plummeting, I would love to go there sometime. Uh, I think this just this magical feeling about and this old romantic story about Twickenham. Twickenham is just one of those places I think you need to visit once in your life. Uh, it's a uh, everybody I've, everyone I've been talking to uh, that played there and so on. They say it is just something else. It's uh, it's just phenomenal. And uh, the Springboks uh, Twickenham is a very ha happy hunting ground for us. Uh, and uh, I think. Um, well, in our own backyard, Alice Park is phenomenal. Alice Park is one of the nicest venues to watch rugby in. It's uh, the the here in there is just so so phenomenal. But uh, I think, uh, and it's uh, the one I visited last was uh, Westpac Stadium in Wellington, New Zealand. That was uh, that must have been it nice. Was, uh, they had, it was just so magical, uh, and it, uh, it was that team that we scored in the end. To draw the oh, game yeah, 16 yeah. off. It was. With uh, Yankees. Herschel Yankees and Peter Steph the Toy there in the, yeah. in the corner. It was, uh, it was it was in the far corner from my side. It's a very big stadium. It's a pretty big stadium, but uh, it was fantastic. And the the Kiwi supporters were so awesome. It was uh, it was just uh, everybody's got this. Uh, I think a wrong perception. Uh, Perception. Perception. Uh, yes. We, we have a very big um, admiration for each other. I think uh, it's it's one of the true rivalries that that still still lives on. Um, other than the only touring side that still uh, lives on uh, the British and Irish Lions. I think that uh, that's just yeah, one yeah. of the um, yeah. I, I think the the early two thousands um, had this. Uh, Bad. Uh, it threw the ratio of the winning losing. Uh, we had a very bad era at that stage. Uh, we were we were in. A, uh, we were. Uh, it was. I think we struggled going into the professional era. I think South Africa had a. They jumped the gun a bit. Uh, they they wanted um, uh, results very quickly, and uh, I think that was wrong. Uh, yeah. If they took their time. And if uh, oh, I don't want to get uh, get uh, very deep into it, but uh, I think we were on the right path. They they just tried to do it too quickly. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think the professional era jumped jumped the gun a bit in South Africa. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. I mean, it it came a bit quicker than I suppose we thought, and we weren't 100 percent ready for it. I don't think we understood it 100 percent clearly. But I'm, um, yeah, I mean, geez, I would love to, I mean, Twickenham is on my, on my um, bucket list, definitely. And the game in New Zealand, geez, I don't, it doesn't matter where, but I think watching the All Blacks in New Zealand must be an experience on its own, you know. I mean, win or lose, I think at the end of the day, it's just a different vibe than, I mean, I've been to Alice Park twice with an All Black game and, Geez, I mean, it's it's next level. It's, oh, it's anybody it's awesome. that can experience that is something you have to experience. And I mean, after that, um, I, um, it was 2018 when um, when Rassi just started, and then we played England, and I was at that match um, at Alice Park, and flap, that was that was as close as it comes to an All Black game as well. Um, oh, wow, well, I was. I never thought I'd be that that excited to watch an England game. I mean, even though it's against the box, I mean, geez, it was just so cool. And the way that we came back in that match, that is, I think that's just what makes it so much more special. And talking yeah. about moments um, that makes it special or whatever, is there a rugby moment for you that stands out in your supporting, playing, whatever, you know, um, anything related to rugby that, that stands out forever. I mean, I know you touched on the 2005 Curry Cup final. Anything else besides yeah, last year's um, World Cup win? That doesn't count. 
Yeah, um, I think, well, with the 2007 win, I was actually in Malaysia watching the MotoGP in Kuala Lumpur at the Lapini circuit. I was a massive Casey Stoner fan on the Ducati, and uh, we went there, a couple of friends, we watched, uh, we watched the, uh, the, the MotoGP there, and well, I think it was 3 o'clock in the morning, we were about 12 South Africans, 120 English uh, supporters in a Finnegan's pub in, in Kuala Lumpur, and we watched uh, the game and, uh, when we won in 2007. That was, that was a, a nice experience in a pub for me. That was pretty nice. And uh, I think if I look, if I look back, uh, I, think, uh, it's, I think it's a bit of a cliche uh, because, you know, you get this guy sitting in a pub, you know, talking about the good old days and talk about his heyday and take, uh, talk about school. And, uh, you know, that guy playing school first team and uh, he never did anything after that. But he keeps you know, wearing the jacket every weekend and stuff. I don't want it to be a cliche because I, I did a bit more after that. But uh, I think for me, I, I had this big love for rugby uh, in school because we, uh, after Mupani, when I went to, in 1994, we moved back to the Free State, uh, I joined uh, the grandfather there on the farm. And uh, I think th that school, there was a coach there, Pit Kluta, he's now at Otenikwa. He's a very good coach. And uh, he was he was coaching and uh, he was studying and played bulls with, with uh, or played uh, tickies with, with Heineken Bayer and so on. He was our coach there, uh, the first team coach. And it was a pre primary and a high school. And I can remember the, every Friday afternoon, it was a very small school, but it was a very good rugby school. A lot of guys came from Vereniging, Sasselburg, Fall Park, uh, all those places to go to the little town called Kopis, Sadel Salia. They were always the President's Trophy, winners of the Free State, and the Directeur's Trophy. It was such a massive rugby school. They didn't have any uh, They played cricket just to get uh, out of studying in the afternoons, uh, in the summer. The winter there is rugby, and on Fridays, the coach had everyone in the square in the middle of uh, in the middle of uh, the first break and they will hand out the jerseys and it was the the green and gold with the four the four uh, uh, gold um, uh, stripes down the the, the infamous Sardis Le Poppies jerseys and uh, after he handed them out he had this team talk very similar to the Rassi Erasmus uh, Annika Meyer type of talks and the guys would stand with the jerseys around their necks, and we were we were um, hip high around these guys. Uh, this was our heroes. The, these was our first superheroes, you know. And yeah. uh, we, we had our favorite players, and I can still remember the nicknames here and the names of of a lot of these guys. We had a we had a guy there who can kick a ball like France Spain uh, electric was his name. Uh, his brother was the first guy who played SA schools out of our school, uh, Zoe Edwards. And his brother's name was uh, Electric Edwards. And uh, Zoe uh, played for a long time for the Griffin Scrum off as well. And uh, after they, they do the war cry, and we were also just fascinated by that. And I think uh, growing, up, growing up in that school, finishing, went all the way to, uh, to Matric. And when I became, uh, when, when I, first got selected for, for the first team. It was just all that emotions, all that emotions just came uh, and it was just, so I think that was that was just one of the best moments in my life. And uh, when I played my first game on debut, I'll never forget it. Our captain who, who played from, I think he was 15, he started playing, he was very good. He ended up playing for the Greek was in Cheetos as well, uh, Skalk Jonker. He was a phenomenal player. And uh, he was our captain at that time, and uh, he was he was clearly way open. Uh, he, he could have scored himself. No one was close, and he just passed on my debut, and I scored in the corner. It was just uh, that's the memories I will always cherish. Uh, not the not my Griffin's debut, not not the 
couple of games are played or benched uh, at the, at the Boerland, or not the other big club games. Like in the West Coast, we, we played there at um, clubs where they drew crowds of four or 5,000 uh, spectators. That's big for club rugby. Uh, and it was some of the it was some of the best gears that you can get ever. Uh, off, the, off the school, that was the closest we get to big stadiums. So, yeah, I think my, my best memory in rugby was, uh, even though all three World Cups I watched, I enjoyed, uh, I only got drunk on these two, Dad. I didn't, uh, I was too young on this one. And um, <laughs> it was, uh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, I think that is, I think that's the closest feeling because I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm proud, yet so envious of every single guy uh, who becomes a Springbok. I think it's it's such a massive privilege, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm proud with every single one of the guys. And uh, even even uh, even if you get uh, selected for your union uh, to be in the starting lineup for your union, it's it's a massive privilege. It's yeah. it's that fine line. Uh, before you way up there, and uh, I think the emotions. I think that's the closest emotion that I could have had because I grew up uh, respecting that jersey, just loving that jersey. And South Africans get a lot of trouble or a lot of flack and negativity around that. Oh, we we rugby is a religion and stuff like that. But uh, it's just it's pride. I think it's yeah, it's uh, it it's is. still something to believe in and. Uh, yeah, I think when 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 I got my first uh, my first first team jersey, that was that was just a big big day for me. It was uh, without a doubt the one that stands out. Oh, that's awesome, man! And um, with your memories, obviously there must be one or two little or some things that you collected along the line, or maybe not as a collector, but something that you got or got signed or whatever, you know, some memorabilia. Oh, yeah. Have you got any memorabilia that you can share with us or one piece Brother, that stands out for you? I have a memorabilia room. That, oh, wow. Uh, the, it's at my dad's bar in the free state. Okay. You can go visit them anytime. Uh, they're in the free state. My dad's got a lot of uh, son-in-laws and so also playing rugby and some of my dad's stuff, some of my stuff. And a lot of stuff I bought at auctions and stuff. But uh, I think I have one year. It's something that I don't think a lot of guys, except for players, have. And uh, there, there's a story behind this. It's the, the pullover jacket of the spring box. It's, wow. the, it's, it's uh, one, of those, one of those guys. Uh, I'm very... I'm, I'm very uh, it, it was a lot smaller than this because the guy I got it from is uh, a lot smaller than me. I stretched this jersey out uh, so that it looked like this. It looks like rented tent now. I got this from a very good friend of mine, uh, Tondra Shivanga. This was his. Uh, we met a very, very long time ago. It was, uh, it, it was with the club rugby and with the, you know, he was at, at one stage, he was at the Cheetahs. And a lot of guys don't know that. They're supposed to know that, but uh, he was uh, at the Cheetahs. He went to the Stormers with Rassi and Dwayne, and, and uh, there was a lock. Was it Chris Barnes? Or, or, there was a lock uh, that went with them to, to the Stormers. Yes. So me and Tondra, we have a very good relationship. And uh, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's like one of them. He's an awesome guy. And uh, I think best pieces I ever had was um, Tondra is a very giving guy he's a very generous guy he'll, he'll give the blanket off his back for someone and that's why I love him so much he's such a good guy wow. and uh, once at a charity a charity auction we had a charity auction with the um, uh, what was it the Pasop uh, Foundation we went on a humanitarian trip to Zimbabwe teaching guys a bit of farming and stuff like that. And we had a, a big auction selling a lot of stuff and so on. And uh, I was in a position at that time to buy some of the stuff. And uh, the one thing, I uh, two things I bought there 
was his debut Man of the Match award. That was one of the things I bought at this auction. Uh, I started being against myself for the charity <laughs> because he actually donated this spectacular uh, piece of history because it's, it's still the record for the most tries on debut. And uh, yeah, yeah, he scored six tries uh, on debut. And uh, yeah. it was, it was uh, just phenomenal. And I bought this uh, with uh, a jer- his only jersey against New Zealand. I also bought it, and uh, quite a while back, just just before, uh, just after me and my wife got married, we went to watch a game in Durban. I got invited by uh, Stefan de Blanche. After that bet, I lost online, where I had to run naked through the street. Uh, <laughs> I lost the bet, and I had to post a video. And uh, yeah, so Stefan invited me. I remember me over. that video actually. Yeah, so Stefan Treblanche invited me. We watched the the French against the Springboks, where Sia Polisi had that big game, uh, man of the match and stuff. Uh, that was this uh, the uh, the start of his big uh, career, and uh, uh, it was on my birthday, seventeenth uh, of June. So it was a big day, and uh, me and a, a friend of mine, we 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 took the streets on after that game, but. Uh, after, after that game, I met up with, the next morning, I met up with Tondi, uh, Tondrai, and uh, because we had a, we had a conversation the one, day, uh, the one day, and he was like, uh, he talked to me, and he was like, Waha, um, how do you feel sometimes looking back and sometimes seeing what you had and that you lost it or don't have it anymore and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you still feel about that? Because I had a couple of farms and property and stuff, and went through a very bad period. And I told them I, I was Tony. I've got my health, I've got my family. Uh, we're working hard. I'm positive. Uh, I'm enjoying life. Everything I'm doing right now is things you can't buy. And, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I wish I could change, but if I can go back in time, I won't change anything because otherwise we won't be sitting talking to each other having a great wine. So, and he told me, he said, yeah, you know, uh, he made a couple of mistakes himself and stuff like that. And he said, he, he won't change a lot, but he's just, he played for the Springboks and uh, he had this massive uh, 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 um, start in a career. Uh, remember, he only played six games. So yeah. it was, uh, and he said, he's got nothing to show for. Uh, sure. He, he sold some of it and donated because he's, he's such a good guy. And, yeah. uh, but he told me that before. So what I did is um, uh, I gave the jersey and the trophy back to him and said, wow. Listen, this is for your son. This, this is for your son so that you can show him. Uh, his name is Eli, uh, such a beautiful boy. And uh, I said, listen, but this is for him. And yeah. – uh, yeah, so in the, still today we we spoke this morning and everything. So oh, we wow. still have a good a good relationship. Yeah, yeah. So I think that 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 was my uh, best uh, my best best memorabilia, if I can call it that. And uh, uh, but I, I knew it it didn't mean that much to me. It meant more uh, for to him. So I decided to give it to his son. So yeah. oh, and now I'm, I still got the pull over, and I will yeah. not give it back, even in cold. And uh, I've got <laughs> my first club championship jersey when we started. Uh, me and a couple of friends started our own club in the Northern Free State, and we won the league. And uh, still got that jersey. Got a couple of jerseys. Uh, some of my mates gave to me uh, from New Zealand when I went there. Now I've got a oh, wow. jersey from the guys from from. Hawks Bay, a big shout out to the guys there. They gave me a Hawks Bay jersey while I was there, and uh, yeah, got a lot of of all the teams. And uh, also, one of the things I love is my jacket Dwayne Vermeulen gave to me before I went to New Zealand because he told me. I remember I've seen that jacket I many times. Prepared for the call, um, uh, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I think I've got a pretty thick. Uh, uh, Skin of all the Brian Brandy got a lot of fat on me, 
a nice isolation, <laughs> but uh, he said I, I won't be prepared for the cold in New Zealand. So, yeah, he gave me a pretty nice jacket. And, uh, wow, yeah, that, is, that. that is really, really awesome. And, jeez, yeah, I mean, better protect those stuff well. And after tonight, yeah, yeah, yeah. you must have some unwanted guests. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, um, um, I wanted to ask you, I mean, just seeing or hearing the friends that you've got and, I mean, the stuff that you've already told us and that there must be one or two little stories, as they would say, that you can maybe share with us. Um, hopefully they are shareable. Um, that you can maybe share with you know everyone that's watching. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've got a couple of uh, I've got a couple of stories I can uh, one day when we add a like a bright and all the phones batteries are dead. Uh, I can tell a couple of nice stories. I mean, uh, there's one I'm only going to mention. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but. Uh, there was one where we were playing against the cheetahs in, 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 in Bloemfontein when they just built the Mimosa Mall. They were the zoo used to be, or, or the waterfront, not the mall, the waterfront. And uh, they they had a very nice setup there, and there was these uh, traboikis, these this, uh, little boats you can paddle with. And a uh, couple of mates, uh, we... we, 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 we uh, we, we took some of those uh, boats out and uh, yeah, I've got some trouble. Uh, I got some pepper spray by security and stuff. So, yeah, that's a story I'll tell on another day. It was it was pretty funny. And then uh, there's another story in Durban uh, where we played there against the Villabiester, not against the Sharks, the Villabiester. Yeah, yeah. About a cup we there. And we played... We stayed in a nice hotel. It was a fancy Brutia hotel, but they, they had such a nice display there in the uh, in the entrance uh, with these, uh, what you call it, the hay bales, this uh, little yeah. block hay bales. And it was winter, it was cold, and uh, I stuffed one of these into the um, uh, fireplace in the, in, the, in the lobby. But it wasn't a real fireplace. It was... Uh, it was it was just art, you know. It was it was these glitters. I think oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, a, I had a couple of lemonades, and uh, I thought it was a real fireplace, and it didn't it didn't take it didn't take uh, it, uh, yeah it, it, it didn't take uh, flame, and uh, I took uh, not my own lighter. I took someone else's lighter, oh. and I lit the thing in the lobby. So there's no chimney, and uh, so yeah. <laughs> This whole thing just started burning, and there was this nice painting over the over the uh, yeah. fire, fireplace, and this thing started melting. It smoke all over the lobby, and uh, yeah, got a lot of trouble for that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was that was pretty funny. It was uh, not at the time, but uh, so, sorry, I keep babbling. But uh, the best best story. Let me tell you, it was, and I told you about this. It was this was our club jerseys in 20, 2009, the Copies Copies Rugby Club, and yeah, I played. Obviously, I played hooker. We had some nice sponsors at that time. We had John Deere and those guys. This was my jersey, and it was yeah, it was no, not that side. It was the Griffins final against my old club Paris and uh, I've, I've got some of my mates watching this game now or oh, watching this video now uh, and uh, that was special because we all used to play for uh, the Paris club uh, but it was too far for us to drive uh, for a lot of farmers so we started our own club the club we went to school and uh, with our debut season we won the Griffins League, and that was just phenomenal. But my dad was there, and he had a, a Chevrolet panel van, exactly the same as the 18. One of those oh, wow. big panel vans. It looks exactly the same as the one in the 18, but it was this Hulk green, this Irish green. <laughs> with, uh, 
and he had a friend who worked for British Airways or something, and he got airplane seats that was in there with the tables with a whole bar in the back. Oh, but wow. it had these Chevrolet diesel engine. You couldn't hear when you were driving because the, the engine was here next to the driver. So now <laughs> we won this game. Now my dad, he lived in Paris and he was also on the rugby board of Paris because uh, he lived there and he had uh, a property agency there and so on. So him and his brother-in-law uh, and all the friends, they were about 12 guys in this bus driving back to Paris. Now they're driving. And between Paris and Fredefort, coming from Belcom, we played at the Griffiths Stadium. Uh, they went and they uh, ran out of diesel. But they didn't know that the injector was leaking a bit. So they, uh, it, it was uh, yeah, noisy and everything. So my uncle living in Paris, just before Paris, uh, he had a guy working for him with a little bantam bucky. And he called them and said, listen, bring us a can of diesel from work. Uh, come and fetch us. And they were standing next to the road. The driver wasn't drinking. Guys, don't worry. But everybody was drinking, except for the driver. Uh, driver happened to be my dad. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, they were busy standing there next to the road, and everybody was chatting and so on. And uh, the guy came. They put in the diesel. They bled the whole thing, get, uh, got the engine going. When they got the engine going, my dad uh, just got out quickly because in the windshield he, he put his uh, – my dad loves drinking out of these aluminium glasses. He, he left his glass there with, with a cool drink in it, kids. And uh, so my dad got back in and they drove. And when he got to the house where everybody's supposed to get out at this Haney guy, his uh, brother-in-law, and my dad went like this. He was like, okay, guys, you can get out. And he was looking and he put the light on. There was no one, no oh, one wow. in the van. No, my dad's like, what the hell happened? So wh when when he got out to get his glass, the driver of the bucky that brought him the diesel, his battery was flat. So he came to the guys and said, guys, we give me a push start, but they were still facing the other way because he came from he came from the front. So yeah, they pushed the start him. Uh, everybody got out of the bus to push start. And when my dad got in, the engine was noisy and he got in, it's dark. He didn't see that there was no one in it because uh, the one guy sitting in the front was sleeping. It was late night. So, yeah, yeah and uh, it was, uh, that, was, that was such a, that was just such a funny story. And I keep thinking about that of the Mikey Spontane, the ghost, the ghost story yeah. of Mikey Spontane because the last thing my dad said, shit, he remembered was while he was driving, he, he saw this bucky coming past with a lot of guys on the back. Oh, wow. And everybody was just giving him the finger. And he was <laughs> like, yeah, they must be getting pretty cold on the back of that bucky. Yeah, yeah. So that was, yeah, that, was, that was just one funny sensor story that I can, I can tell you now. That was, for me, I think to, to, if you know the guys, it's just one of those stories. You need to know the people and yes. know the whole situation to, to appreciate it. Thanks for sharing that, man. That's really cool. I mean, I've been threatening for a while since I've actually gotten to know you and um, that I'd really, really like to come and visit you one day. And I know my wife would probably enjoy it more because, I mean, you live on a wine farm. You, you're a wine farmer yourself. And, um, I mean, that's obviously... You know your your life story after rugby is you've gone into well farming has been in your blood always and um strangely enough coming from the free state you decided well you want to be a wine farmer um just tell us a little bit about that your life after rugby um yes i mean it's, it's just just tell us about the whole wine industry and how you got I involved and why Jock, let me tell you, I think, and it, it goes in every single profession, I think. It's just, um, you, you, everything is yourself. If you look at yourself, uh, let's take you and your website now. 
you are a brand yourself. Even even if you have your own business, if you, even if you are working for someone else, like myself, I, I work for Atorexia Wine Farm. It's one of the, just one of the best wine farms out there. It's just uh, we make s such good wines, and uh, it's not just the owner and the winemaker that's the brand. It's it's everybody involved is part of this brand, and uh, what. What made me fell in love with this whole thing was um, the first guy uh, I worked for in, in the wine industry was a guy with the name of uh, Theo Basson. He's just a phenomenal farmer and businessman and winemaker on the West Coast. And uh, he, he told me uh, the one day we, we, we were sitting, we were having a chat, and he told me that Wine farming is easy and wine, wine making is easy if you, if you have the good grapes and so on. He says that in the end, it's the marketing and the selling and uh, protecting the brand that you built because it can take so, so many years to build it and just one slip up uh, can screw that up and it can ruin uh, a brand. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was, I think, the challenge of, of, of the wine industry, uh, I think I love a challenge because cattle farming is just cattle farming. Uh, maize farming is just maize farming. It's just you right the way if you all in it together. Uh, wine farming, yeah, you're in it together at, at one point. Uh, you, you reach one point, then you're not in it together anymore. Now, that's the marketing and the sales. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's it's almost uh, everyone for himself at some stage, and uh, I think it's it's sometimes it's good so, uh, for the smaller guys. It's a bit bad uh, for the co-ops. It's easier with the budgets, but um, I think the challenge of, of the wine industry uh, fascinated me because it's not just the labour. It's not just the the um, you know, working with people it's it's the whole package it's the uh, there was uh, the the guy i worked under at at at, at uh, because Theo, Theo was the owner but the guy uh, i worked under the general manager there was a guy uh, called Audrey Reda. Um, he said that um it, it 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 takes years to build, build a name but you can just like this and it's 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 gone and uh, yeah, I've got some nice stories there as well where we had a bit of wine tastings and I taste a little bit too many wines at a tasting and uh, I got a bit tipsy and started talking crap and that's the one that he pulled me aside and said, hey, hey listen, remember, you, you're, still a, you're still an ambassador of the brand and you need to, you need to focus and you need to so yeah it's uh, and he also told me and uh, also the guy I worked for uh, or, or I work for now sorry um, also told me that if you the day you think you know everything in the industry is it's when you need to get out because yeah. you'll keep learning you will keep learning and I think in rugby it's the same mm. uh, even though the rules are written in a book yeah, uh, you know everything. It's it's it's. Uh, you can learn that book over and over and over. It's a lot of there's uh, when you when you think you know everything, get yeah. it. Yeah, uh, it's you'll never be you'll never be the guy that knows everything. It's uh, and if you got if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. I think you need to you need to challenge yourself. Every time you need to keep challenging yourself. You need to yeah. you need to build yourself up and um, go forward. You know, life's so short. Life's so short. So why, 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 yeah, why, why, why drink bad wine? That's the same. Life's too short for that. You know. So uh, it's just an expression, but uh, it comes with the sport. It comes with work. It, you can be mm. a you, you can be a, a person working at a teller at the bank. You can be a person uh, working, uh, well, at the gate of an industry, or you can be the CEO of a company. It's, it's yeah. if, if you don't apply yourself to what you're doing, if you don't take pride in your work, I mean, why, why are you there? Uh, 
uh, your only motivation can't be just a paycheck. You need to yes. you need to live life as well because well, 70, 60 to seventy percent of your life you spend at work. Mm. If you don't enjoy it, why why do it? It's just uh, it's uh, I, I believe in the one thing that if if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. Yes, you know it's just enjoy enjoy it. Right? Do something you enjoy. If you don't do it, just go out. Find something that you love, and find, uh, and work work out how you can make money out of it. Do something you love. And not everybody can be as privileged to do to, to do something yeah. they love, but uh, it's it's you can make the best of it. You know? Well, um, very wise words there, and I must say. The time, the short time that I've known you so far, and I mean, I've got to know you over social media to start things off. And um, I must say, I think you are very, you're a great ambassador for whatever you stand for. Um, I mean, you represent the company you work for. I know you and you're actually an ambassador for Patriot Apparel. Um, geez, and the list just goes on. I mean, anybody that's I mean that that's watching this or is going to watch this should really make an effort to follow you on social media, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, wherever. I mean, it's a joy following you um, because I mean, with with all the seriousness comes a lot of laughter as well. I mean, I think the balance in your life is exactly what you just said. I mean, um, and I mean it's great. I mean, that's just I think a lot a lot of the followers that you have probably have never spoken a word to you or whatever. But they all just feel like they want to know you. I mean, I think you're just one of those kind of guys. And sometimes, even though for the time that I've known you and I've I've and I've spoken to you a lot before, we have actually asked you, but what exactly do you do, Kwaha? Because I think anybody that follows you and doesn't really know you, like like I got to know you, for instance, um, also thinks that because it's nobody really knows, are you a winemaker, are you this, are you that? What are you exactly? So I think whatever you do, you do it great uh, and you do it well. And I mean, um, I really would um, encourage people to follow you for whatever reason, whether it just be for laughs or just for inspiration purposes. And um, I remember during the World Cup last year, I mean, you had a video series that you were going at. And I mean, those were hilarious. And I mean, th in times like, I'm actually amazed that you're not making videos in this lockdown period um, because I mean, I think a, a lot of people probably expected you to be doing those. Maybe they're still coming. Yeah. I think we're just waiting to hear if we're going to get another three or four months. But um, I want to thank you from my side, and I think for a lot of people's side, for the entertainment and for everything else that you bring to social media, um, you're really a joy to follow. And um, I think you're a good example for anybody that wants to become something on social media. And I, I'm not saying that's what you do. Um, but I think you, you set a great example. I've learned a lot from how you operate. And um, I know you've even given me some guidance as well in a lot of things that I do. So um, thank you very much for that. And I mean, and last of all, but um, thank you very much for tonight. I mean, I think it's it was fun. You've broken the yeah. record. I told you before the show I wanted... I wanted a certain goal, and I can tell you we uh, it, it was broken. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Well done. <laughs> no, and, uh, well done, Brock. And uh, let me tell you, um, yeah, it's uh, uh, for the guys afterwards um, watching this, uh, please go follow Jock, the yellow cap, uh, dot com. It's, uh, it's a shame that uh, they, they shut your previous uh, page down. It was it was so unnecessary. It was uh, it was I think the whole thing. I would I don't want to get into the politics of it, but uh, uh, you had a tribute and oh, it was just uh, I, I loved what you did and uh, yeah. So I'm I'll, I will always uh, I'll, I will be an ambassador uh, ambassador for the yellow cap as well. I don't think. I don't think the guys at Ataraxia Wines or Patriot Apparel will uh, will mind that I'll be an ambassador for you. And uh, yeah, no, no, no. I'll, I'll encourage guys to follow you because I love what you do. I love what you do for the game as well. Um, all the time that I've known you, thank you for 
the love that you have for the game that we all love so much. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, during dark times like these, you ask why I don't make videos. It's just that South Africans have such a good sense of humor. It's uh, there's so many good videos out there right now. I'm gonna embarrass myself if I have uh, my own um, my own quarantine videos. So I'm gonna stay out of it for for just a little while. It's uh, I had some good ideas, and uh, <laughs> then someone would jump the gun. There's really brilliant South Africans got the best sense of humor. And oh, yeah. uh, if I may use this opportunity, I don't know uh, everybody who's watching. It's just, just uh, guys, follow the rules. Uh, we all do. We all in quarantine, and uh, we all on lockdown. Uh, it's difficult for everybody. Um, I'll be, I'll be uh, praying for every single one of you guys, and uh, hoping that we'll all just uh, come out of this healthy and uh, make the best of it. So. Uh, Let's hope it don't get extended by too much. If it does get extended, uh, I hate the fact that it got extended in Dubai and New Zealand and places like that. Uh, I hope I hope we get everything under control. But uh, I think if it gets extended, you're going to see a couple of videos. Uh, as you can see, my, my, my wine rack is uh, it's emptying up a little bit. So uh, we, we'll need to make a midnight run like the old moonshine guys. I hope we got uh, we got fast enough course to go and get some wine at the cellar. But uh, we don't encourage it, boys. We don't want to break the rules and the law. So, yeah, we'll uh, everybody just stay safe and job for you. Uh, all of the best for the next couple of episodes or uh, all, all the other episodes. And uh, I'll encourage uh, more guys to get in touch with you so we can get a little bit uh, more interesting uh, uh, a guest than uh, than uh, than a wine farmer and and uh, old club player. Uh, <laughs> I, I some of the big boys watch this. Uh, I send it to a couple of guys and uh, hope hope everybody watched it. I hope everybody enjoyed it and I hope, the, hope, hope they'll get in touch with you. So, uh, but thank you once again. I, I know I'm babbling. I emptied my bottle. Well done. So I'll keep babbling. It's going to be a long Thursday tomorrow. We all have the shades on. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the invite. Thanks, Quaka. Thanks for everybody that joined us tonight. Um, as I've mentioned um, at the bottom of the screen, you can see at Quaka Boucher, that's his Twitter, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, his um, Instagram handle. And um, also um, our new um, Twitter handle at Yellow Cap Sports. Um, please give us a follow. And also, if you don't mind, give um, give our channel subscribe at the bottom somewhere. Yeah, everything is upside down here. So give us a subscribe and um, follow Kwaha and give us a follow as well. And thanks again, Kwaha. Thanks again for everybody that's watched. Um, We'll see you tomorrow again. And um, one, uh, the guy that we'll be interviewing tomorrow has actually been watching tonight. Um, Steve-O, was wach for you. See you guys. Steve Cheers, eh? Cheers, guys.